All right, I'm gonna to try to read part of the story I was writing, but I am recording this with my iPhone, which has not much space left on it, and I'm reading it off of a screen that's kind of far away, uh, computer screen, so hopefully I can read the little letters, because it wouldn't let me zoom in with the mouse when I did the little clicky thing. And I'm gonna be looking at the screen a lot when I'm reading, because I don't have this poem memorized at all. I can try it every so often, make eye contact, but it's probably not gonna happen very much. I crouched shivering under a low-hanging bough of the tree. The water poured down my body, cold but not refreshing. I remembered entering the forest. I had been near the edge of it when I had spotted a half-grown rabbit nibbling on a dandelion. I stopped to watch a while and he moved further into the edge of the forest and again began to nibble on things. I had always loved wildlife and rabbits are no exception. And so he followed him a bit, almost laughing out loud when he started happily playing among the ferns, leaping and twisting in the air. One thing led to another, and soon I found myself following an old deer trail and stopping to admire the red fungus and large toadstools that grew out here in the damp, dark conditions. But now I had no idea. I just woke up like this, still in the forest someplace, but it was closer to dusk, and it was pouring. The rain cascading down my naked body as I huddled there shaking. Why my clothes were missing was another quandary I had, but for now, all I could think was how very, very cold I was. I desperately wished I had never stopped to admire that rabbit at all. Half standing, I looked about me, trying to get some sense of direction, but nothing looked familiar at all. Having, oh wait, I'm back there again. Ah. Okay, I made myself start walking. My wet hair slapped me in the face in a scolding manner as I stepped over sopping pine needles and trudged nowhere in particular. And this, my friend, is the backdrop for my story. Or perhaps it is not a story, but a poem. I am unsure. That is unclear to me since it seems to have no sense of direction or purpose other than to just be and to express emotions. After walking a good hour or so, at least it felt like an hour to me, I finally huddled under another large tree, tears running down my face and mixing with the rain, my miserable self exhausted and half frozen. That is when you came. I heard the swishing sound above me and suddenly you were there. I smelled you before I saw you, the smell of sulfur mixed with rancid sweat, and soon your wing was over me, sheltering me from the rain as a large umbrella would. You crouched beside me like that, not speaking. I felt my body relax immediately, just the scent of you does that to me, for I know you and I trust you. Now I was no longer alone. I leaned in against your side and breathed deeply of you. You lowered your leathery wing down against me, but remained facing forward and silent. I wished in the back of my mind that you would pick me up and whisk me off to some more hospitable environment, some place warm and dry, but I knew that was not your way. Not that you wanted me to suffer, but you preferred to have me help myself when I could. So I was content with the shelter. You sat still like that for perhaps 15 minutes or so. Your only acknowledgement of my existence was your wing over me. I did not need you to speak to me. What was there to say anyways? Suddenly you extended your other hand, gnarled, oh boo, I forgot where it was, gnarled claw that it was, and flame shot up in front of us, straight out from the ground. The smell of sulfur grew much stronger then, and when you lowered your hand, the fire remained burning brightly, as any campfire would, except that there was no sticks, no kindling that was burning, it was just the ground there, on fire. Soon I felt my skin warming, my face growing pink and hot from the flames. My tears stopped streaming down my face and shortly, shortly after your arrival, but now a bit of a smile even chanced to show itself. You reached down with your claw-like fingers and touched my skin, my face. Your touch was cool, like always. Your skin was never warm, but I had grown accustomed to that. You seemed satisfied that I was warm enough and leaned back against the tree behind us, spreading both your wings completely wide, a magnificent sight, and slightly spreading your legs and arms, inviting me to come sit with you in your embrace. I looked up into your eyes, painful, dark eyes, and I climbed into your arms and you pressed me to your chest as a mother might hold its child. Both your large wings you put over us like a can.